Hey there, hunting family. Get ready for an episode that's going to take us on a journey through time and distance. We're thrilled to bring to you the legendary Buck Menser today, sharing tales of our early days and deer drives and heart-pounding moments running down deer from behind. Uh, we uh, grew up hunting together, um, got a lot of memories hunting and, and just growing up together as, as young lads. So uh, this is going to be a fun one, uh, walk down memory lane with one another, sharing some of these stories with the next generation who are with us. So um, uh, I hope you guys are excited for uh, this guest that we got coming up um he's going to be unveiling a couple of secrets that he carries he's been a successful outdoorsman for many many years and um just really excited to have him on so join us for some laughter nostalgia and the spirit of the hunt buckle up hunting family because this episode of tracks and tackle is an adventure like no other uh subscribe to us give us a five-star review and i hope you're ready let's go And I uh, just want to say, hey, hunting family, welcome for uh, another episode of Tracks and Tackle. This week, we have uh, one of my childhood best friends, a uh, family member, another another person of the, the Menser lineage. He's got the same DNA. Um, he's my cousin, uh, Buck Menser. And um, we, we were just talking. We, we grew up together, and we were sort of whatever we did, we, I want to say, 95% like that's a high percentage 95% of the time we were together um you know i was at your house you were my place you know um we, we pretty much lived together and we lived close enough to one another that uh, it wasn't one of those things you know they say now how back in the day when the street lights would come on you knew it was time to go home well we didn't the street lights we didn't have no street lights we just kept on going yeah. yeah. So we, we were together. We grew up together and uh, started. We cut our teeth on hunting together. Um, you know, your your family and my family are, are we have that relation. And so uh, your uncles and grandfather like instilled things into me and taught me the right way to do things and stuff. My dad and my brother, you know, instilled things into you. And so uh, it's been a while, man. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Doing good. Good to see you guys. Yeah, this is going to be fun. So, uh, got the got the Hollywood horse with us. Go ahead, man. I, I don't want to do all the talking. So. We're in the house. We're just we're just excited here. Uh, <laughs> got a few stories to tell and get clarity. You know, I I heard a couple of different tales from different people, but we're just here to get some truth. Or I don't know if that's the right word. But we'll probably muddy the water yeah. and stir it up a little more for you <laughs> yeah. at this point. Right. Can, can you get the water any more muddy? The reality is, we were all going to. I don't know about you, but we were going to go to the camp. Uh, up to our cabin this weekend we're going to do some shed hunting get the cameras up and um they called for they're calling for rain so we're like man what a day for recording so we were going to record either way right and then i got this text during the week and it's buck and he's like hey man i'm available <laughs> so uh because i've been trying here for a month or so we've yeah. been just sort of uh, kicking it back and forth trying to get together so yeah, man. Why don't you just start off? Give me a little bit of your background. So, I mean, we know you, but the, anybody listening, that, you know, tell us who you are and uh, like how you got introduced to the sport of, of hunting. So, I guess similar to these guys, I mean, I was sort of born into it. Right. You know, the family did it. You know, it was something the, you know, the whole family did. Uh, when I was young, we had, you know, Dad and I went to a hunting camp in Bedford. You know, it wasn't our camp, but it was a group of guys that I went to school with the kids. Dad was friends with the dad. You know, the, the families all knew each other. Um, and that was that was really cool. And I guess kind of as as everything changes, that, you know, that kind of stopped as the kids got older and got away. The, got, the older guys didn't come anymore. And, uh, you know, but I, it really, really got me into it at a young age because of that experience, you know. You sat there and you, you listen to, you know, we call them the old timers, you know, and uh, <laughs> tell their stories. And you just, you laughed. And, you know, I can remember being a 12 year old kid thinking, man, these guys are crazy. And now, you know, I'm sitting here 28 years later going, they weren't crazy. Like this stuff, you spend enough time in the woods, you will see it and it'll happen. 
Right. You know, it's, it's the truth. So, uh, I mean, it's definitely, definitely kind of a way of life. Yeah. Yeah. For us, it definitely is, you know, yeah. you don't, you don't go through fall and winter without uh, spending some time outdoors. Yeah. When it was, I mean, when it was hunting season growing up, you hunted. That's, That's what right. you did. We hunted like it was our job. <laughs> you know, we missed work. We missed school, whatever it took. Like when it was time to go hunting, we went hunting. That's, that's the interesting thing because I know like, you know, growing up, we all had like a construction background, we were, you know, and so like the, the months leading, like September, August, like leading up to October, November, you know, we were trying to make hay to get everything done, get like all the jobs and projects done that we could so that cause there was going to be a lull at, come November into December, work was going to stop. Yeah. You know, and that, yeah. I can remember my grandfather telling customers, well, um, you know, whatever we get done by Thanksgiving is probably all that's going to happen for the next two weeks. You know, you're not going to see a whole lot of us, you know, and, uh, and we did like say we hunted, we hunted like it was our job, um, uh, you know, right, wrong or indifferent. That's what we did. Yeah. Yeah. But that's how like we got, we cut our teeth on that, you know, cause we were the young guys in that group. Yeah. And like you said, when going up and, and getting into like a hunting, um, hunting community, uh, being part of a hunting club, like having friends, hunt with it's so much better that you can go out and take your try your hand at it but if you don't have somebody to share the stories with yeah if you don't have somebody to like uh, share the memories with it's not the same yeah yeah and you know and i guess you know i would have probably been like 14 15 years old i had been hunting for a couple of years um i really got into driving with the local group around home and that's you know that's where we hunted together right you know there was a lot of good memories from there, you know, you know, your dad, my grandfather, my dad, you know, the uncles, you know, your brother, yep. you know, family reunion every time. Yeah, yeah it was, back it literally yeah, was showing up, showing up on Wednesday morning, you know, to start getting the deer drives together because we, we never drove on the first couple of days, you know, let everybody do their thing. And, you know, then once it was time to do the deer drives, everybody rolled in, um, most of the time it was at my dad's place. You yeah, know, that was kind of the meeting. That was the meeting house. And, uh, you know, everyone's telling the first two day story, you know, this is what happened. This is what we've seen, you know, listen to everybody, you know, the guys with the frustrations that are ready to just go out and <laughs> whatever they see is dying today. Like, you know, we're not worried about what it is, you know, and, you know, we're going back before antler restrictions. So, you know, yeah, sometimes, right. sometimes by Wednesday or Thursday, you know, some of them guys that had been in the woods, for two days and hadn't seen nothing but the bottom of their potato chip bag. They were, they, they had were an itchy, itchy trigger finger. Yeah. They had an itchy trigger <laughs> finger. And, you know, we had a short leash man. Um, because you, we, it would be like a two days. Like we, we gave a short clock, two days of sitting still. Yeah. And then, um, then we were coming together as a group and I don't know, I, I'm sure there are groups that still do that, you know, go out and drive and everything. I know we don't do it like we used to because everybody's older and, Farms change, ownership, like just the properties to do it. You don't have the opportunities that we you used to, but um, we we really cut our teeth on that, and that's what got us going. And it was cold. Yeah, and so, it was cold then, so you could actually you'd put enough clothes on to beat the briars down. You know, to beat through the briars anymore. Although colder it gets in deer season, you wouldn't make it. I mean, I can remember shredding Carhartt coats like in a year. A brand new Carhartt coat is gone. Just from beating the brush so so these old guys could miss all the deer and uh, <laughs> you know my grandfather was famous for it you would come out of a drive and he just got done shooting six times and you're thinking man you're in there hooping and hollering you got we're having a good time like man we got the deer out there's gonna be deer laying out here and uh, we get out there to hear uh well that was fun boys they went this way let's go let's <laughs> yeah. yeah you know like yeah uh what do, you, what do you mean they went this way what were you shooting well yeah, it was fun let's do it again like you know, so Brady, tell, tell Buck a story with the Red River. Yeah. So we're like introducing him to like a lot of old uh, uh, John Wayne Western movies and stuff like that. And, um, you know, so we go to cabin, you know, you pop in a DVD and you watch a Western right. or something like that. And that's, you know, we call it the uh, superstition. Yeah, call it a lucky luck. charm. You know, it's a John Wayne movie. We had some luck. But, uh, there's some good quotes through some of the movies, man. I, I get why, uh, Lon here and, I don't know. You watch westerns at home? So, sometimes. All right. They're not my cup of tea, but up at camp and there's nothing. Yeah. I sit down and actually pay attention. But um, the, the gist of it was 
two of the the gunmen. They were they were shooting, and one guy's out there, and he comes back. Uh, what was it? It was you know, those were some of the two best shooters that I've ever seen. And the other guys, well, what were they doing? Having fun. <laughs> they heard all the gunshots. Well, what were they doing? Making all that racket? They were just having fun. And that's what you're talking about. You know? Yeah. Oh yeah. At the end, of them, them guys, you know, they were laughing and having a good time, and you know. There was days where it was very disheartening. Like <laughs> you're you're bleeding, you got briar stuck in your ear, you know, your hands are bleeding, you're hurt, and they're still laughing, you know. And we still did it. We did it like it was our job. Yeah. But we woke up the next morning and we there were we were having fun. We were, you know, I yeah, you know, man, there's so many stories and so much so many different things that from doing that, you know, and it was a different it was a different time, like you said, you know, we don't really do it like we used to, and a lot of that's just change of the area and mm -hmm. you know i know you know i shot a lot of deer i would never shoot sitting in a tree stand doing that no kidding but you did it because <laughs> when we were we hunted different we were hunting for we hunted a we hunted private land but we were hunting for we're population for, we're hunting control for yeah we were hunting for meat and population control because the farmers wanted x amount of deer kill you know yeah it's completely different than going out and hunting a stand yeah it's or trophy hunting a, a target buck, yeah. you know, yeah. which, you know. And as, as much as anybody thinks, oh, you killed all the deer, no one ever killed all the deer. <laughs> like, they just got better hiding. Like, they were still there. They know, know what's going on after the first day or two. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. They, they know the safety zones, where they can get to and where they can't. That's yeah, and the, you thing. know, the key to that, you know, back in the day always was go get some new deer introduced to an area that they didn't know. Like, if you wanted to really have fun with it, you know, we would go, you know, to the far reaches of our hunting area and get a deer on the run and get it to run down the creek a mile and a half down the creek. And once it got in there, a deer running around lost in the woods will move more deer than any human will ever hope They're to. They're better drivers. They're better we drivers than we were because they go running by this deer. You know, a deer will let me as a person, if I'm walking past them, they'll lay there and let me walk by. But if they see another deer up running around, why is that deer running? Right. Maybe I should get on my feet. Something's going on, mm -hmm. and you know, it just yeah. That's a good. That's a good point because like uh, their their defense mechanism is blending in, you know. So they will just sort of hunker down, sit still. But uh, when they see each other pushing, that that's really a, a a good point you make, you know. And when we can, when you get some deer, I know when we were driving, you're in the drive, pushing the briars, and we got into some big green briar patches and they're like we got into some deep stuff because we were the the younger ones we got sent into the, the crap that no one else wanted the older guys maybe they did it when they were younger but they had us now but when we would get into that stuff and you couldn't see 15 feet in front of you but you heard gunfire going off or whatever like we would get excited oh, yeah. like all right man yeah. it's success. Yeah, it's or you or you heard the deer leaving and you were so ta you could see him and you were so tangled up that you couldn't even get turns you take the shot that stuff. you know you could hear them leaving the briars and all you can do is yell that they're coming out you know and you know some days you're yelling that they're coming out and no one's shooting no one's shooting you know i remember one time in specific probably one of the biggest deer we killed and i don't know if you were along with it when when my buddy jason shot that big eight point that we called bullwinkle I don't know. I don't know. I don't remember. So it, we jumped it and I jumped it. It literally was, you know, the length of this table away from me when it jumped up. Uh -huh. I got a pot shot off of it at it. And I actually put a hole through between the tendon and the rear leg, right where you hang a deer. Mm -hmm. I put a perfect slug hole through there <laughs> and I am screaming at the top of my lungs, huge buck, huge buck. <laughs> the next guy over is my dad and he yells, don't shoot. It's not legal. That sounds like your dad. So right? yeah, that's definitely my dad. Don't shoot; it's not legal. And yeah. now we're we are having like a, an argument in the woods, and I'm like, "Are you nuts? Can you not see?" And he's like, "I'm telling you, the deer I seen wasn't legal, and no one has shot yet. No one has shot yet." And next thing, this deer breaks out into the field in front of the drive, and we can all see it. Now my dad is yelling, "Big buck in the field! Big <laughs> buck in the field!" And I'm over there laughing, going, "Really? You don't say? You know?" I've been. I tried to tell you that when it ran by you, uh, and we ended up we ended up killing that deer. It took uh, it took another drive and some some guys showing up late, you know, <laughs> that were late to the party that day and wanted to know, hey, what can I do? Well, go stand on top of this hill in the middle of the field, 
What do you mean stand on top of the clay knob in the middle of the hill? Just stand up there. We put a buck in the bottom. And, you know, sure enough, Jason, you know, he went and stood on top of the hill in the middle of a field. You know, most guys are thinking, we just put you out of the way. Yeah. He ends up killing this buck because, well, he was in the right place. Well, and that's the thing. Like, we knew the terrain. Yeah. You know, so, like, we, we had figured out, and we hadn't figured it out. That those that have gone before us had it figured out and yeah. they taught us. Yeah, but, and we and we soon figured it out. Yeah, yeah, like you learn by by watching or through experience that all right, if you stand in this spot, they're gonna bust you and they're gonna turn and run a different direction. But if you stand at this spot, they're gonna run from one section of woods out towards the other, and uh you're gonna have an opportunity. Yeah, you might uh you know, this spot, spot A might let you shoot. 10 times because of where you're at and you have no nothing to worry about in your backstop and you've got unlimited range but as you said you would spook the deer now you went to spot b you got two shots but there's a really good chance they're going to be walking or think they're home free they're committed right? they're committed already yeah. now you know you got two of the best shots you can ask for yeah, you know and it, and it, science to it. And yeah. it's interesting just with like flankers and like all this as a kid, like it's like a military tactics that we're applying on these deer, and then all of us in our orange, you know, riding on the back of the pick, pickup truck. It was just quite the operation. Like when I was really young, it's so fascinating, and it still is. Yeah, and you were you were the lucky one because you come in towards the end when it was winding down, so you never got the full, you know, the full gamut of where well, you're going in the briars. You're young enough that we're not. <laughs> it took you know, care of you. When you yeah, were, yeah, yeah. The young guys always, you know, you got taken care of for a certain amount of time in there. Like there was this time period where they're like, hey, let's get this boy's first buck. Let's yeah, get, get a couple deer. Sense, which is right. Get him, you know, hey, we're worried about him getting lost. And then you get to that point where they're like, oh, yeah, he's good. Who cares if he kills anything? Like, send him into the. Yeah, yeah it's, if he gets lost, he knows how to find his way home kind right. of thing. So they send you into the briars and, you know, they, they let you pick where you want to go. <laughs> yeah, well, okay, it's Briar Patch A or Briar Patch B. You know, you want guys on your left or guys on your right kind of thing. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I'd be interested to hear from you, though, um, what your because you're like saying, like, it was fascinating to watch. Yeah. Like, so your experience, you're hearing us tell stories, but why don't you, you sh just chime in a little bit? Because you came in as a younger guy. And what was your experience coming in and seeing the operation? Because by then, you know, we'd been hunting together for, you know, I don't know, you're about 13 years behind us. Right. But yeah, I, I think just the biggest thing that I, I really like, you know, you're young, you're impatient, it's cold out. So like when I'm sitting in the tree stand, it's like eight o'clock and I'm just trying to survive another hour. So I don't have to walk, interrupt dad's hunt, basically say, hey, I failed. I'm cold. Let's leave, you know, and let him down. So, you know, it's a little bit more exciting because you can walk through the woods. You're able to, you know, keep warm. Yeah. You know, your, your sits are short lasted, you know, mm -hmm. half hour and then you're up and you're moving again. So that was the most fascinating part to me is just a different different way to hunt. Okay. So just getting taught that, you know, different terrain, just being with the guys in the group, you know, being able to yell in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> it was always fun, like whooping and hollering, um, keeping in line and yeah, just just learning and you know, being proud of other success, you know, like what we said earlier, you you push through the woods and you hear gunshots, it just gets you excited and when you were it it gave you a it's sense a sense of pride for exactly. what some for someone else's kill even i think that's really important because you know today you know like i know guys that they'll tell you like hey good hunt but they're really like they get bummed because you saw deer and they haven't seen deer um you know but really when you're doing a group effort like that like i would be ecstatic and it was almost like instilled into us like it was it was su success for one is success for all yeah like when we when someone killed a big buck man everybody was happy for him there wasn't nobody was jealous and you know even the, i mean totally different subject or direction but i hunt different when i hunt today because people get jealous about oh you seen deer you killed deer mm -hmm. so i I'm going to be saddle hunting next year and I climber hunt because I don't leave a stand in the woods because there's so many guys that are jealous. And I, you know, I look at the days of driving and think, man, I don't get jealous. And it's, I attribute it to that because yeah, yeah, you put, you put the work in and there was days we walked miles and I never got the gun off my shoulder other than to unload it when I got back out to the road. Right. And 
you know, someone shoots a nice buck, you're still happy for him. You grab a hold of it, and you got it, and you drag it to the truck for him because you're just pumped that, hey, we we helped do that. Like, hey, way to go. That's the camaraderie piece, you know, yeah. that, that we, I don't know, we've experienced it. So, like, we love it so much, but it's hard to teach. You got to experience oh, yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Just being, uh, like, young, like, as I get older, I understand it sucks when you walk through these thick <laughs> patches of briars. Uh, we did a little hunt in uh, the state lands up here uh, towards uh, the Black Farm, a little bit above that off Railroad Road. But anyways, um, they clear cut that. So it's all these like saplings yeah. and thick walking through. Like wasn't too bad when I first started. But, you know, 10 minutes in, you start to sweat and they're whacking in the face. You're like, this is miserable. But, you know, I'm young. We talk about wrestling. You know, I'm trying to shed a few pounds while I'm out there. Like, I was eager to go, so I really didn't mind being told, like, hey, you know, you're a dog this round rather than sit, because I get it, you know, it's it's nice to have a sit. You might think you have more opportunity, but um, towards the end, before I guess ultimately we slowed down doing it, I was seeing more deer. I think the last time we did it, I, I got one when I was being a dog, and like, that that was an awesome, you know, yeah. first, to realize, hey, I, still, I have an opportunity, you know, this isn't just for someone else, you know, it can be, be for us, me as well, but just, uh, yeah, going through the briars, and I, I remember my dad being, you know, frustrated. We're going to Hell's Hill, and <laughs> I think, I don't know, I, I think I've only been there once, I think, just because of how miserable it's been. It's one of those things, like, we're sitting here telling stories. I only heard stories of. I lost so many, like, items of clothing oh, and yeah, so I, uh, There's a walkie-talkie yeah, up in there. Well, the, the, so you want to talk about Hell's Hill. I'm sure, I hope your dad has told you the story of my good friend, Swifty. Maybe we'll we are uh, we are driving this, and he Swifty doesn't hunt a lot. He's got back into it. That was awesome. Here recently, <laughs> he's really recently got back into it. His girlfriend is into it, so he's he's really getting back into it now. But he hunted a little bit. He come with us one time, and uh, you know he was like the rest of us. He wasn't uh, necessarily a specimen of physical and shape, physique. you know, physique. <laughs> you know, he uh, he liked to eat. But uh, we're driving this, and he's in there, and we're we're in the, we're in the worst of it. We're in there where you just you're contemplating the meaning of life. I mean, you're you know, yes. there's you're you're having a lot of thoughts in there at this point. You're you're calling the guy that sent you in there some names, and you're yelling down through there. You're never hunting with this group of guys again. And the next thing you hear is, "I pulled my groin," <laughs> and Lon is on top, being the flanker up top. He's laughing. He's laughing up there. I can hear him laughing. I'm the guy below him. I can I can't see nobody. I can hear this all happening around me. And next thing I hear, I hear Swifty yell, Lon, just shoot me. Just shoot me. I swear. I swear I won't haunt you. Just just put one in me. Just do it. And, and uh Lon Lon is still laughing at him. He's like, if it's that bad, do it yourself. I can't even get my gun around to shoot myself. <laughs> if you can see me, shoot me. Just end it. I swear I won't hold it against you, you know? And yeah, that's the man, that hill we man, we had some good times. That was that a hill, great though. weekend of hunting. Cause I remember I remember We ran a lot of deer off of that hill though. I don't know if we butchered that night and then we were at Swifties or if we just oh. went and celebrate. We were celebrated something. But that weekend where where he got hung up, I I remember I, I was I should have been designated driver, but I, I could hardly get us. He wasn't that far down the road, but I could hardly drive us home. But we were celebrating something. So I can't even see that's the thing with the memories. Like you remember stories like that. Yeah. I don't even remember the deer we harvested, but we were we were just having a good time. Oh yeah. And we were just doing it yep. together as a group. Yeah, and, and there was, you know, the the group rotated sometimes, you know. There was sure. friends rotated in, rotated out, you yeah. know. The core group of guys was always the same. But, you know, the guys that we <laughs> that we hunted like it was our job, we were always the same. And there was guys that meandered in, meandered out, you know. It was a rotating, revolving door, so to speak, you know. Guys that could get off work, you know, that only took a day or two, they would call up, hey, you guys hunt. You get a reputation, too, from some of the stories yeah. that we would share. Yeah. You know, um, you know, yep. sometimes it was a good reputation. Sometimes <laughs> it was not such a good reputation. Yeah, it depends on depends on what side of the fence you're looking at it from. Right. You touched on hunting at the Black Farm. We took the group to the Black Farm, and I don't know if you were part of that. Either one, one time, he, he probably would have been. 
Were you part of that one? I put it out there one time with you guys, I think. Were you part I, of the fill the truck day? And No, you know, no, that, because that I think was, I was, I had, I had moved away. That was, yeah, yeah, that was like in that, that was when the group was starting to die kind of thing. And, uh, you know, it was getting harder to hunt on the grounds we always hunted. And uh, we took the group and went up by the black farm, which is my in-laws now. And, uh, of course, my, my father-in-law, he's like, yeah, come up. I'll, I'll have it lined down. On, I'll be able to tell you guys where to go. And, you know, we knew it somewhat. And my brother-in-law came because he, he knew the drives. And we started driving on the mountain. And, uh, you know, we literally filled an eight-foot bed pickup truck full of deer. Huh. And there was a deer that wasn't on the truck. And the deer were still barely fit on the truck. We killed a ginormous buck that day uh, you know guy was in his late 50s that shot it had buck fever so bad he wouldn't even put his gun down uh, <laughs> we we drove the drive we come out through the drive and we run deer i mean we had deer everywhere and there was snow on the ground so you could see and it, it, it was just that that's the, the perfect best. it was the perfect hunt like if you were going to draw draw it up and say what's the perfect conditions well it was it was like three to four inches of snow it wasn't too cold the wind wasn't blowing. You could see through the woods, and the deer were on their feet. And the deer were moving, uh, and you know I'll never forget that. We come through that drive, and I was the top guy in the drive. There was a flanker above me, and I could look down through the side of the mountain and see the deer just running through the saplings, through the brush, you know, just yelling down through there. You know, here they come, and the guys shooting, and they weren't hitting nothing. And a uh, couple shots at the very end of the drive. Uh, this guy by the name of Mike, he actually worked with my father-in-law. It's just monster mass buck come out to him. And he basically shot at point blank range. Come out the trail he was just happened to be standing on. But it died behind a clump of brush. And a good buddy of mine, Bruce, was above him. And Bruce seen the whole thing unfold because he's up the mountain. Bruce knows it's dead. <laughs> you know he knows it's dead he sees it laying down there bruce is hooping and hollering for him you know i can hear bruce yelling about this thing that's down it's 20 minutes later we get to the end of the drive and we're walking down the logging road and mike still has his gun up and he's still shaking pointed it at this brush and we get down to him and bruce is like hey dude put your gun down i'll go in and get this deer for you he's like huh he's i think it's He's like, listen, it's been dead for 20 minutes. I've seen it fall over. He's literally right around the brush pile. But I'm not going in there until you put that gun down. That's right. You know, so he finally, we, you know, we're all laughing. He puts his gun down. Bruce walks around there, and literally 30 seconds later, here he comes with, with this buck. And, you know, I wish we got pictures. Right. You know, there again, mm -hmm. nobody documented this stuff, you know. We were just hunting. We were having fun, you know. It, the pictures are in my mind. I can, you know, the guys that were with us that day, they all remember it. That's you know. it. Like we didn't like before cell phones. Yeah, we didn't document I mean, it. You there know. were no pictures. It was these stories that we were yeah. told about these tales and things that happened. And you know that story. You know, it, it's it's actually a great lesson on perspective. You know, because he didn't have the same perspective that, that oh, yeah. Bruce did from the high ground. Yeah. You know, and when you have a different perspective on on a topic or a subject or whatever, you see it completely different. Yeah. Which is why ultimately we wanted to ask you to come on. You know, because you got we share these stories, but you you are coming from a different perspective than one. You know, the ones that we've shared with the with you. So, what what would you say, Buck? Is um, like how how has started out the way that we started out cutting our teeth on driving deer and hunting as groups and stuff how's that impacted your your outlook on you know just your love for hunting well, I think and how we, your approach is i think we touched on that a little bit earlier it uh it instills in there that it's all right to have somebody else kill a deer and mm -hmm. be happy for them um and that's the biggest thing for me that i i see from it you know the camaraderie of it obviously is is huge but that that Hey, it's okay that you're not the guy that killed the deer. You know, the deer's dead. Hey, we it's it's great. Hey, congratulations, man. You know, good day to be in the woods with you. You know, you know, you're just sharing the memory. Just sharing the, sharing the memory. You know, and uh, mm -hmm. even to the you know to this day, there's people that I see. You know, I don't go to town a lot, <laughs> but <laughs> there's people when I go out to town, you know, and I'll see them, and I'll be like, hey, man, how you doing? And I'll walk by them, and I'll be like, well, how do I know them? You know, my wife will be like, well, that's the guy that shot that buck that was, we were, it showed, you know, shot the buck back at the farm. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, people you, you can remember the face, but, you know, you know that that's my thing is it the the, the pride in the hunt the joy in the hunt for somebody else you know yeah, it's it's, it's and, definitely a winner and also too when i'm uh now that i'm older sitting in the woods you know and i used to get very very impatient um uh, you know if i haven't seen a deer it's like oh, we're done let's go you mm -hmm. know now if i'm sitting there in the woods and i haven't seen nothing for a while i start thinking about them days where you know my my coat was getting ripped off of me and i was on my third hat for the day and i was like I didn't see any deer that day either. This is a lot <laughs> easier on me. No you know, you know, this is a lot easier, you know, and, and just appreciate the, the, the two squirrels over there that have been driving me nuts for a while, you know, just, right. you know, it's not that bad. You know, I, I do, I find myself in the tree stand or, you know, whatever it might be thinking about those memories a lot, you know, and I still hunt the same, you know, the same woods, the same mountains. We did all that on. So a lot of the times when I'm out in the woods, unless I'm upstate or something like that. But when I'm hunting local to home, there's not a woods that don't have a memory. That's true. You know, of, of some kind, you know, that, you know, good or bad, you know, most of them are good. There's some, there's some that aren't so good kind of things, you know, and, you know, but, uh, you know, good or bad, there's a memory in almost every woodlot you go into. And that's, that's the thing for me. We were know? nuts though too. I mean, yeah. we were crazy kids. I mean, I remember as, as hard as some of those patches were to drive, I remember it being so cold, like I would volunteer to drive. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, I can't stand this one because I just need to get my hands need to warm up or whatever. Yeah. My toes need to warm yeah. up. Yeah. So, like, we were nuts. We would, we were doing it we voluntarily because we, it was part of that. We knew we were contributing to the group. We yeah. were adding value even as youngsters to the overall hunt. And honestly, at the end of the day, I killed more deer driving than I ever did standing doing that hunting. And the other thing was, I knew where the deer were. Mm -hmm. I spent enough time in them woodlots that we hunted every year that come archery season, and I didn't need to scout. I didn't need a trail camera to tell me that there was going to be a deer here. Archery season next year, I knew where I could walk in the woods, mm -hmm. climb a tree, or sit on the ground, for that matter of fact. And if I sat there two days, I was going to stick an arrow in a deer. I mean, you just knew where they were. You got to know... And you got to know how they run. We talked about that a little bit ago, you know, knowing, hey, well, the deer goes here. They're going to bust you. Knowing where right. they're going to go, where they're committed to. So that was like you scouted and hunted all at one time. You know, it was they're all. Creatures it was, of habit. Yeah, the creatures of habit. It was all built into one one experience, you know. And, you know, some of the guys, they, they knew that. Like even there were some times we drove certain woodlots and they'd be like, hey, you need to be over here. Why? Because you know where them deer are. Yeah. And you didn't always want to do that because also as a driver, and I'm sure you can attest to this, when you did it so often, even if you knew you were going to walk, there came a point where you knew where you wanted to walk just because you knew. I walk around this, this section. This, well, not only walk around this brush pile, but you knew the guy going over there in that bottom. If there's a deer in there, he's kicking it out of that bottom, and they're going to try and run up the draw. Yeah. And. Yeah, we were supposed to stay in line, but yeah, we're also I'll creating this guy head start. A little, if little I give this guy a little head start and I stand by that stand of pines, if he jumps them before they go to the standards, they're coming by me. So, you know, it became a cat and mouse game with the guys in the woods, you know, that you, you, you knew what was going on. And it's learning to, it's learning the lay of the land. And, and sometimes, really you know, the, uh, you know, the captain. You know, he didn't always see it our way. And sometimes we had to change some things, you know, on the fly because the captain wasn't always along when we went in to start a drive. So there were some times where, hey, man, there's this deer has broke back on us three times this season. We start in here. Trussell, you stop at this pine tree. Okay. Once we get by, we'll yell for you. Well, sure enough, they ran right by. And the only difference this time was Trussell got to shoot five times. He didn't hit nothing. But Russell got to shoot five times. It did exactly what we thought it would. You know, got the action involved. Yeah, funny here just listening to you talk because I can recall the like, almost if it was yesterday. But I, you know, my dad he's pretty you know quiet, laid back. But you know, if something goes you know not the way that we intended with the drive, like you're the guy that's calling me audible, just like you hear talking. Like probably because you're torqued off too. You've walked through this, the same stretch of woods and the same routine. You know, but it is interesting how, you know, sometimes we'll, well, let's run it the other way around. Let's do it the opposite way just to keep the deer on their toes. 
Well, yeah, I mean, if you can, I think you touched on it, but, like, but if you can get a, a, a deer confused, whether it's a, a different section of woods or, yeah. you know, look, we would drive, sometimes we would drive a, a section of woods on one day to set up the hunt for the next day. Yeah. You know what I mean? We would leave a certain section of uh, a property, we would leave it alone for two or three days to just, because we knew, like, let's create a safety zone and let's push the deer and, like, if they're going to go in there, we'll get the right group of guys together to go in and then we're going to go have some fun, you know, yeah. in that section of And so, sometimes that meant, well, let's get deeper in the week when the part-timers leave. Yeah. And we only have a smaller and more intimate six-man crew instead of 15-man crew. You know, we'll we'll go do this because we don't need all that guys. Right. There's some strategy involved. Yeah, there, there was definitely there's definitely some strategy involved. You know, and and not that we didn't like them other guys, but honestly, at the end of the day, we killed as many deer with small groups of guys as we did with the large groups of guys. Yeah. What would you say, Hollywood? Uh, now, some of these stories. So like, are there any stories that you you want the, a different perspective on? We talked about perspective and. Um, yeah, so we got plenty of stories, but uh, yeah, just still reflecting uh, being young and just being able to navigate the briars a lot easier than that. So you're going to get a little broader in the shoulders and, sure. you know, you take up more space. But I can remember Buck, he's got a uh, <laughs> assless chap, and, you know, just to me, you know, different way of hunting, you would go out with your, you know, your slug gun and you'd have... It was like the first time I ever seen one. It was like that Magnum with the big scope on the top. Yeah. You looked ready for business, but now that I'm older, I know, you know, it's difficult to, you know, navigate. And get I ruined, I ruined so many scopes driving for deer when I was young mm -hmm. and it became so frustrating that that's when the slug gun came out. Uh, I had a red dot, you know, a red dot scope on that thing. And it, and it was, uh, that was a deer slaying machine. Once I got that <laughs> thing down in, uh, it was expensive to shoot. Uh, yeah. It was like, I think at the time, which perspective it wasn't expensive compared to today sure but like yeah you know it was like 225 a, a shot every time you pulled the trigger it was like two and a quarter you know out your pocket for the slugs that i was using but i mean it would sling them out there 300 plus yards and do the job so <laughs> uh you know it was fun that's why we did it you know i can remember one time my uncle walked had a drive and there was a the one wood lot we always everybody wanted to be the standard because if there was a drive that was going to be easy to shoot deer, it was that one. It's, you know, we called it Joe's bottom, Joe's bottom. A lot of young guys got their first deer. You may have even got your first deer. I know your brother, that's where he got his first deer in a snowstorm. You know, I was part of helping that get that deer down to him. So a lot of young guys shot their first deer there. And uh, a lot of times at the end of the season, the dogs, we would get to stand that. And, the, you know, the elders would bring it to us. And uh, I was in I was in the tower stand one day, and them uh, slugs had blue casings to them. And my uncle comes to the bottom. He gets out and he walks down there, and he says, "Looks like there's a damn carnival going on down here." <laughs> I said, "Well, there it is. Just wait until we start dragging." And uh, I think you were down in the creek that day. We had deer everywhere. I remember sitting. You, I, I, I never got you were there. Trosel, Jason. I mean, we had a heck of a crew of guys down there that day. And, I don't I don't know if it was the same day or not, but I remember sitting in a stand on that drive at the end of the year and uh I had there were like three or four doe coming single file and they were just bound nice and slow, right right up toward the creek bottom, and it was just like one after another, you know, laying them down. And we had pulled a lot of deer out of that bottom. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Yep. But but yeah, we didn't that was also a good spot to get the young guys involved. You know, because right. there was success. Yeah. In there. Yeah, your 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 brother got his first deer in there, and uh, that was part of that. We were soaking wet, and we're like, "Oh, he killed it. We're done. We're done. It's <laughs> finally snow. it's snowing. We're soaking wet. We're cold. Like finally, we got this thing killed, and you know." But we would work together, and especially for the younger guys, yeah. you know, because we want we want to get the next generation involved. But we would work hard to try to get you guys to see the deer. And they did it for us too, you know, yeah. so that we have opportunities so that we would get the itch. Right. Yeah. You know, because once you have success, I've got buddies that go out and they're, they're folks have hunted, but they don't hunt because they've never had really success. And they're like, why sit out here and freeze? But, um, 
Yeah, I mean, it's different once you have a little bit of success in the field because then they oh, yeah. to keep coming back. Yeah, for sure. Especially doing for you know someone's first year. There's a story we're going to get to about that and it involves your <laughs> shotgun too. But uh, I just want to last lead off with just the fact of, you know, we talked about mentoring the youth and mm -hmm. just, you know, it's a good learning experience. I learned a lot about, you know, gun safety and just here's how we do it. This is why we're doing it. But I can remember, uh, I guess I was too young to carry a gun with me, you know, whoever I was with, there was one gun, but I remember on a stand with your dad and, you know, just some deer ran out and, you know, he shot one. It was just like the best thing ever yeah. just to, just to be part of that, that experience. Yeah. And yeah, you know, just to be thrilled for him to say, Hey, we did it. Yeah. Just, just yeah. It, uh, one thing I'll say about your, your dad, your dad always looked out for the, for the new guys. Oh yeah. Like, I mean, he took, a, he takes a lot of pleasure and you know, when there was a, somebody got to be old enough to hunt, He'd look out. He would be an advocate for you. He'd get you positioned in the right spot. He'd volunteer to stand with you too. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was all about that. You know, hey, I'll stand with him. You know, we'll we'll take this. I'll, I'll help him. And, but yeah, he he did it. But you know, Dad shot. A, Dad's got three bucks on his wall that come from driving for deer. That you know, he doesn't have any problem telling someone that. Oh yeah, these are the boys that drove them deer to me. That deer's there because of because of these guys, and you know, I was in Buck Stand when I shot that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, quit telling that story. You know, I was an idiot when I put that stand there, but I killed some deer out of that stand. And you know, the guys that killed deer out of that stand never me, but everyone that killed a deer out of that stand was happy I put it there. You know, but it's giving back. But yeah, what's about? But yeah, there's there's a story that I don't know how I probably hear it once every four years. About uh, I'm curious to see how he remembers yeah, this. So just just perspective. So just looking to get a different version of it, and more clarity. But uh, I heard Ron here. He's he's pretty quick. He can chase deer down, leap for leap, bound for bound. That's the story. Now that now that was Maury's first deer, right? Yes, that was my sister, Maury. That was her first deer. So here again, looking out for the younger generation. You know, if we. You know, full disclosure of this story. We'll start from the beginning. Looking out for the younger generation, Joe. He's the neighborhood captain kind of thing. He overseen the hunting. He kind of was the guy that everyone looked to when it was time to, you know. And if Joe couldn't be there, Joe would normally appoint someone who was going to be the guy. Mm -hmm. um, so Joe had a stand in Smith's Woods, and that was Joe's. Well, Joe kind of gave it up and hunted his own bottom. And, uh, I hunted Joe's stand as a young kid, you know, and then he, when my sister come along, uh, I got pushed out of a lot of things, but that's a whole nother problem for a whole that's nother day. Segment. That's a whole nother segment. That's a, that, that's a whole nother thing we can talk about. But, uh, you know, my sister went there with my dad to that stand, you know, to the stand. That was the stand to hunt if you were a kid. Mm -hmm. And uh, sure enough, here comes the buck, just like it's supposed to. Maybe just like, yeah, you know, and just like, just like we're filming this hunt, you know, just like we got hunt of a lifetime or, you know, whatever. Yeah. And we're, we're filming this hunt for a kid. It comes up, she takes a shot, hits it in the guts. You know, it was, it was a bad shot. Uh, I mean, there's nothing first year, first year it happens. I mean, guys that have shot a hundred deer, still make a bad shot regardless. It's a bad shot, but it's a fatal, a fatal hit. We assume. So, Essentially, for a week, we tracked this deer at night most of the time because it got some places we shouldn't have been. So it was tracked with pistols and flashlights through some places that, uh, you know, we definitely didn't want to be caught. Let's put it that way. <laughs> and uh, till we get to the next weekend, and it was one of them times actually where there was not a lot of hunting going on. Uh, different reasons, whatever. Not The group wasn't together that week. Well, the season went kind of went on hold. Yeah. While this, was yeah, and and they didn't want to they didn't want to push anything, and you it's know, important that we got this year. Yeah, so we 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 tracked it as we could, you know. When basically for Saturday morning, are sure we know where this. We've been tracking this thing for a week. You know where it's not. We know where it's not. <laughs> we know where we pushed it. We've seen it every time we've tracked it. We've seen it, but haven't been able. Just because of the terrain, and we talked about the briars and stuff, haven't been able to 
put this deer down. Tracking so, it blood. Uh, some of both. Right. Some of both. Some of just we're tracking blood. We're tracking, you know, stumbling yep. leaves, leaves that look like they were stumbled through. So we got it narrowed down to a woodlot that we've never hunted as a group. But we have permission to go in because we're sure this deer is in there. So Saturday morning, we saddle up. This is what we're going to do, guys. We can go to this point. Hopefully, we find her this deer. This is the last stitch effort. She didn't even come hunting at this point. Like, she's so beside herself. She's ready to quit. She was done. Uh, she was done. She's wore out. She's not even coming hunting. She's not even getting her clothes on. Um, and it wasn't a very large group of us that day. But So we're going over to this pine thicket. And the pine thicket's not even there anymore. It's been clear cut. It's, it's gone. Let me just interject one thing. Because it had snowed and then, like, freezing rain overnight. Yeah. And so, like... You had a, a good crust of ice on top of the snow. And so when we were walking, I mean, you were crunching through the ice. So yeah. it wasn't like we had a good. We were sneaking up on nothing. They're right. Still thick. Yes. Yeah. But we, so we go over the, we go on this hillside. And, you know, we don't know what to expect. We don't know what's going to happen. So we put some flight and it's, a, you know, it's kind of like a gully, hollow, ravine, whatever you want to call it in between some orchards. We put some flankers up in the orchards and a couple of, there's a road down through the center. We got guy on the road. We got guys on the outside and there's a couple of us walking through the, the pine thicket. We get to the end. I mean, we are with, you know, we're to that, like everyone is, the, the balloon is deflated kind of thing. Everyone is just like, yeah, man, I can't believe it. This thing, it got us like, you know, after lost. everything, we lost it. And there it stands. It jumps up literally right beside me. I remember because I was I was next to you and you're like, I see it. I, and I said, I remember yelling, I see it. I pull up, shoot, take the hair off the top of its back. It falls down, gets up, and starts running back. Now we're running through the woods. You know, we we head the deer off. I don't care what anyone says to this day. You're the one person that'll vouch for this. <laughs> yes. That's the real reason why we got you. The leap for leap. And, it, and it's the story that it was all day. Leap for leap, bound for bound. We run that deer down and killed it. You know, yes, it had a slug wound across its spine. It had been gut shot for a week. But yes, leap for leap, bound for bound. We run that deer down and harvested it. I think that, uh, you know, the part that we conveniently leave out of the story, which is why I brought up the weather conditions, is like, you're watching this wounded deer try to like run on ice. Yeah. You know, and it wasn't go it wasn't getting anywhere. It wasn't getting anywhere. We're you know, there's shots being fired. And, and and I mean at this point everyone is firing on this deer because we know it's the deer. Yeah. You know, like it, it's not getting out of there. Like it's fully surrounded, but we're still running this deer down because it's you know it was more about um means. your sister's first kill yeah. than I mean, you know, certainly it was it was more about the sentiment of the deer. Yeah, I mean, being gut shot for a week and the condition and stuff like that meat wasn't worth anything at that point, but it was the sentiment of the deer. And, you know, she was down. So, but it, it was really important to, I know your dad. Yeah. Um, and, and to all of us, really, that we that we got that thing. And you don't want to ever leave an animal wounded yeah. either or anything, but that, there was just a little something special about finishing the job. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, that's the one that'll always live in infamy, you know, because we <laughs> ran that deer down. We, I mean, we did. When that deer died, we were on top of it. Like, we were there, you know. We were on it. Like, you know, if we ran out of bullets, we were going to tackle it soon. Right. But, you know, we, you, you know, we, you don't know how many times, though, that we tried to do that. Thinking, you know, when you're a kid in the woods and you're like, oh, I can head them off. Even with the, you know. They want to teach it the angle on the football field. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, you can use an angle on a deer, and it doesn't matter. They can outrun you every time. Yeah. But we ran that deer down. I don't care how anyone's version of the story goes. You know, and, and call it yeah. adrenaline because we knew why we were chasing it. Call it whatever you want. But I guess just some of the details were left out. They were slowly added the more and more I heard the yeah, story. Yeah, but it, I mean, it, it, it uh, you know. It wasn't getting away. We were, you know, we, we were going to chase right. it down, you know, and everyone was laughing because they seen us chasing the deer. Like they knew. Yeah. 
I mean, you know how it is with the with the older guys. Like, I mean, we like to you like to bust your buddy's chops and, and that sort of stuff, you know. So, you know, we come out of that drive and we're like, you know, hey, we just ran this thing down, leap for leap, bound for bound. We we got on it and headed it off. And uh, you know, everybody wants to throw in those those details that we we conveniently leave out. Well, it was gut shot a week ago. Yeah. Well, well, it was running on ice. Yeah. So, so were we. <laughs> so were we. You know, it was, it was fair. You know, fair's fair. But, uh, you know, that's that's one of the things, the group, the camaraderie, the, you know, you've heard that story, obviously. So, it, you know, the story tracks. The, the story is getting passed down. You know, it, it's, yeah. it travels, you know. How old were you guys? Well, well, if your sister had just My started. sister had just started hunting, so we'd have been like 15, 16, probably. You know, so, so I don't know if it was our very first. I don't know if it was our very first year. So I'm thinking we were 15 or 16, 16, 17, somewhere. In, we were we were between 15 and yeah. 17. The perfect age, you know. You know, once you're into it. Why I laugh is like I think I picture you guys as you are now. <laughs> oh no, 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 nothing yeah. now. Yeah, so you like know. that's where I'm kind of like I raise more questions in the sense like, oh, it's wounded, but just to realize we how were long big burly boys back then. Yeah. Like, no, no, since no. I know you guys were probably more in a, a lot more shape. Yeah, a little yeah. bit more athletic. Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. we got a we got another guest. The dogs greeting somebody coming down into the uh, the studio. Yeah, we were we were a little more nimble than we are today. Right. Today yeah. I'm standing still and I'm just shooting. <laughs> because yeah, like uh, when you know we walk the mountain tops up at our camp in Pepper, you know we we do our recording, <laughs> and if he's recording, all you hear is. So we know we have to work on our cardio for the next year. Yeah, I I really I can relate to that big time. Like I, you know, we so my wife and my kids we started doing some hunting in Potter County, and there's a a mountain up there. It's exactly one mile of walking from the truck all uphill on a logging road, and it's straight up one side, straight down the other. So there's really no hunting to be done, right? You know, in, in the way I like to hunt anyway. But once you walk that one mile, when you get up top, it flattens out. Big top, big mountain top. You know that's, you know, it's still rolling on the top of the mountain. It's worth. But there's hiking. one, there's one mile of uphill, just straight walking. Legs are on fire, lungs are on fire, and every time I make that walk, that one mile, it's one mile until you see another road to branch anywhere. I make that walk, and every time I get up there, and I say, never again, never again, am I doing this? And before the day is over, on top of that mountain. I will see something that says, this is why I make this walk, and I'll be back again next year. However, I'm getting a little smarter and uh, a little more financial stable, so uh, I'll be looking into an (laughs) e-bike. Because as I was up on top of that mountain last year, these guys are cruising by me on an e-bike, and then it really started burning burning more (laughs) than just my lungs, that the fact that I make this trek, and now this guy just cruises by me, you know, Who's got probably thirty pounds on me? Cruises by me on an e-bike, going even farther. Yeah. Well, it's the right tool for the job. Yeah. Gotta, yeah. Make tools to make it a lot easier. Yeah. No right. doubt. No doubt. Well, do you, Lon? You just showed up. Do you want to? Do you want to hop in with us? Whatever, man. I mean, we'll sit and we're gonna we're gonna do an episode with you. But why don't you, if you're gonna hang out, come hang out. Pull up a chair. Yeah, we'll hop you in here, and you can probably share some of these uh, stories. Uh, oh, it's deep. <laughs> I don't it's know deep. that it's. I don't know that it's any deeper than it's ever been. <laughs> if we can set him up, you know, back here around the corner, or if you want to slide around, you get around him, behind me, Lon. Yeah, uh-huh. why don't you hop on in here? And because uh, I know that you've got. A, we we're just talking about perspective. You know, you're on deer drives or whatever and one guy's got one for well, you're actually here to defend yourself now because we, you've been talking about a lot here this morning <laughs> it don't matter we cover each other <laughs> that's right so so what would you say um from the story we were just we we're just talking about mars deer the one that we ran down from bound, for bound. From, bound for bound leap for leap from your perspective because you were there that day when we came out and we were saying hey you know we had just ran this deer down from behind what was what was your take on that? Because Brady's getting the he's getting more details of the story, obviously, but uh, he's heard my version now. He's heard Buck's, and I know he's heard yours. It was a week after she shot it, right? Yeah, yeah. It lived for a week with a bullet in its guts. That's <laughs> we uh, 
a little drive on you know, her first deer. What it was all about getting her her first deer. That's and that's what we were saying. Like there was a bit of a sentimental push on that. We all wanted to close the deal on that for her because even that that week in between things kind of shut down. There wasn't a whole lot of heavy hunting going on until that deer was found. Yep. Yeah. You know, but. From the from the story aspect of things, you know, when we come out, and we're telling stories like this. These are the memories. Like we have visual when we tell the story. Like I can picture it. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah. But you you had a I don't know where you were involved on that drive, but at the end of the drive, when we started like telling the story about everything that had transpired, I don't know. I just I feel like I feel like there was like bullshit guys. <laughs> That's not how it happened. <laughs> well, it was laid down in a big, deep hollow. Uh huh. Deck priors, load down trees. All right. So, me and another guy, probably six or seven of us, driving this hollow out. Well, <laughs> me and a guy that was on the side of me, you know, he might have been 15 yards, maybe 20. Holler grab it. <laughs> All right. So we both look and this deer, you guys ran down, took 30 seconds to get to its feet <laughs> directly between me and him. There wasn't no way either of us could shoot. You know, there wasn't any way for us, one of us, to get out of the road of the other one because it was that thick and we were that tight on stuff. Yeah, and the deer ran about 10 yards, just about to the point where you could, you know, start thinking, you know, I'll stand here, you shoot. And it fell down. <laughs> and then it took it five or 10 seconds to get back on its feet, crawl a little bit. And it did that two or three times. So it finally got to some easier walking for it and made it to where you guys were. And then that's when the fun got, started. Got to, on the ice. got to hear the story about how you guys run this thing down. You know, even when it did get to its feet, it couldn't hold itself up straight. So what I see basically Brady, what I'm catching from this is we could have ran it down. I might even be able to catch it today. <laughs> <laughs> you know a good opportunity for that. We had to do it all over again. We would we would still run it down. Oh, I would still do it again. Like I probably, you know, I'm definitely not catching it today, but uh, I'd still try. Right. That's what you it's know, about. We, we it still was the try. effort to get the first one for your oh, sister. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, that's the important piece, is you know, because yeah. uh, you know, we were just talking about how you know back in the day we didn't take pictures it's like we do now. We don't like document like a lot of the stuff was just stories that were told when we were kids getting mm -hmm. started. So we want to talk, we were doing, we had a good successful hunt this year. Um, we both, you know, shot bucks this year, Brady and I. And, um, you know, so decided we're going to do some European mounts. So we're sitting in my basement, working on these European mounts, you know, got them in the cooker, cleaning them up. And uh, I got, I've only done like one or two Euro mounts in the past, right? So I've got them hanging on, hanging up down in the, above the workbench. And he starts asking me questions about this one well, seven, seven point, kind of a gnarly looking seven point stuff. And so I started telling him the story about this deer that broke out across an open field that you and I unloaded. <laughs> like, talk about carnival shooting. You know, we unloaded across this uh, open field on this deer and just about gave it a heart attack to think is what happened. <laughs> but do you recall that story? Oh, yeah. One. Yeah. And two, why don't you uh, why don't you walk Brady through the map? Because there's some uh, Lon's version and my version are close, but maybe not exactly. You know where we were, how it happened, not exactly uh, identical. So to I don't time. recall exactly where we were setting when we seen it the first time, but we seen it on the fence. We seen it in the fence road going above the farm behind Vince's house. Knew it was a buck. We're on the truck. They take off from the truck. And the deer disappeared. We get up Vince's driveway. They stop the truck. 
and we start up across the pasture. We're, we're still walking along the fence at this point, and we're, we decide we're going to cut across the pasture and try and head this thing off. For those that are listening, why don't you describe for us, like try to give a visual picture of like the pasture, the fence line, the driveway. So, so the, from where we parked, so we drove the truck in the flat driveway and parked where the hill starts, number one. It's all uphill to the woods. It's probably 300 yards-ish. Big cow pasture. Big cow pasture. You know, fence runs right along the road. And the woods is a narrow strip of woods. And then it comes back to a point, And the base of a hollow opens up into a big wood lot with some houses in. So if the deer makes it to that wood lot, probably not going to be able to go. So the, the idea is we bail off the truck and take off. Because we were going to get an angle. On we were going to take an angle. We talked about <laughs> getting an angle and running a deer down a while ago. We're going to take an angle. And, and you know, the the older guys are right in there with us on this operation. So it's not just two young guys dreaming this up. We're just the guys that they're sending up across the field. Well, as we get started up across the field, we're, we're hoofing as much as we can hoof at this point, you know, like. You know, and you said they, earlier before we started uh, recording, there ain't no sprinters ever been. In yeah, there ain't, family yeah there ain't, we don't have sprinters here, you know, so we are doing what we can in hunting boots and hunting clothes. You know, Brady touched on how we were dressed to beat the briars. So it's not exactly like we're in our running shorts here either. <laughs> and this deer comes out to the edge of the woods and we see the deer that we're not beating it. So we proceed to open fire on the deer. And, Do you remember uh, what you were you were hunting with? Oh, I was hunting with my slug gun. That was the slug gun days. And, uh, you know, the first two shots were to kind of range things in because you could see <laughs> the pine trees. How far was it? You could see the pine tree splinters just flying. It's it's 300-ish yards at, at least, I would think. I mean, I'd have to go to the range finder to say any different. I mean, that's my best guess to this day. When you're a big cow pasture like that, if all you see is, like, grass, yeah, a gnolly, gnolly grass hill, and it goes on for as long as that big as that is. It's, it is hard to, to range it. But the first two, the first two don't count. I can guarantee you, they were just ranges. And and what I need to, what we need to do to lead this thing, because you can see the pine trees. It was running first. too, and it's yeah, it's running. It's not walking, especially once we started shooting. Somehow we knocked it off its feet. Who? To this day, we, we couldn't tell you. Yeah. What were you shooting? I was so I usually hunt with a 30 odd six, but that day I was carrying a 30 30 because I was tired of like busting brush and stuff. Yeah, like 30 odd six is what I needed on a, a wide open field like that. But most of the briar patches and stuff, a 30 30 would do. So I just had an old lever action 30 30, which isn't built to shoot 300 yards. So I was I was sending some from the hip. So I don't know that either of our guns were equipped to be shooting what we were shooting, but it died on the edge of that field in that wood line that day. Yes, it did. You know, he was a. Uh, I don't know what you said when you saw that. You're like, man, what happened? That thing got hit by a truck or something because it, it uh, had weird horns. I mean, we were we were getting close to it to the point where it was turning and it wasn't running a straight line. Like it, it knew it was in danger. So you know, have any bullet holes? None that we could see at the time. I don't. I don't know that. I don't know that there was any confirmation on that because when we were cutting that deer up. Your dad took the cape. To the taxidermist to try to find the bullet hole. <laughs> yeah, that because uh, he was convinced we gave him a heart attack. <laughs> yeah, which maybe we did. You know, I don't. I don't know. It, I know they there ran was, up there and died of old age. I we do just know a deer can die from a blade nose. <laughs> you know, they, they just happen to. We just happen to be there when it died of old age. Maybe I don't know, but yeah, that that was uh, some story uh, because just from being unprepared and ill-equipped. But I remember being in the bed of the truck seeing that thing bust out over that, you know, and we knew it only had so far until it hit the big woods. Yeah. And yeah, I don't even remember who was driving the truck anymore, but they were on it. Like they they knew we had to get there to try and head it off and, uh, you know, do the best you can. You know, we were taking the angle. Right. It's funny about taking the angle. I can remember our street being real young, uh, the old bow in here. I'll show you yeah, that one. That thing's from, looks like it's from the forties. <laughs> Just passed down from generation to generation. But uh, just be in the woods, you know, you're, you're impatient. You just, maybe more so you just don't know. But, 
you know, if yours 80 yards is well out of my range, I'm only shooting like 20 yards, but just doing one of these. And then as soon as I release, <laughs> as soon as I release that arrow, just watching it fly. But I guess I didn't have the strategy of ranging it in for the next two shots. You got You got <laughs> After that first one, I was like, I you got to go. keep, you got to keep that in mind when you're doing that, you know, that's the range thing. You, you talk about shooting at long range. I mean, that was that was a short shot compared to some of what I tried with that slug gun. <laughs> I know you were there for it, Lon. Mm -hmm. up, at, up at Naxted's, we had a, a, a real nice buck broke out. And we're in the bottom below the pond. And these guys are behind. The, the guys with the rifles are all behind the barn. And here again, there's no sprinters in this family. <laughs> they got to get the whole way around the barn to be able to see it. I'm the only guy with a gun who can see it. And the first time I seen it, it's probably 400 yards and gaining fast. And I'm launching mortar rounds out across <laughs> there. And the best part about it is, you know, you're shooting slugs 400 plus yards. Instead of just laughing and telling you you're a dumbass, these guys, a little higher, a little farther out. You know, Almost to the right. Effort. Almost to the right. Yeah, that, they're, they're, the they're, they're, they're yelling it out. Like, I can't even see this thing on the gun because I'm way up pulling the trigger and we get done with the drive and you know everyone's laughing about it and joe says well we need to go up there and check because i'm telling you he was close <laughs> like and when we went up there almost shot for shot them slugs were hitting the ground between the hoof prints and the snow going out across that field so we were just you know it's interesting how we were we were that close you know yeah. it, it, you you know i was making the right adjustment but i needed to double my adjustment yeah, that's funny. Yeah, I think uh, generationally, if I did that now, I would get a get a chewing out. <laughs> I'd lose my gun. Well, you say that, but I, I shot the best buck of my life this year, and I ranged. I ranged it. It was four hundred twenty-five yards where the first bullet went in him. Plug? No, it was with a rifle. <laughs> it was with a rifle. A little bit of a different. Yeah, it was with the rifle, but I would have took the shot with it. I right. would have took the shot. I would have. So, yeah. I mean, what's that? I mean, we know what it's what it's like, but uh, you know, tell us a little story about. You'd say it's the best buck of your life. So yeah. we had the, we had this deer on camera. We knew where we knew where it was living, where it was traveling, and my wife and daughter have been in a blind. They were in a blind for two days straight hunting this deer. The gang shows up to run off. And uh, Mason and I had hunted in the morning. We were hunting. We were hunting the edge of the field, so the gig's up by eight thirty, nine o'clock. They don't. They're not trying to come out of the orchard back into the woods. It's over. So we had went home and fed. Went home, fed, fed the cows and stuff. And we come back, and I was like, ah, "What do you want to do? You want to take a mountain ride? You got wrestling practice coming up. That thing." He's like, well, "Let's go out. Let's ride out the top of the mountain." So we ride out the top of the mountain, and we're crowing out the railroad then. And he's like, "Why don't you just drop me off?" above the buckets i'll walk down through the rhododendron and stuff to you you go set at the bucket i'll drive uh -huh. that down to you all right so i drop him we uh we beat feet i beat feet around there get back into the buckets he comes down through nothing well while he's getting to me we hear this hooper and holler oh, somebody driving something you know we go out to the truck we're getting ready to leave my father-in-law sitting in the field at the farm with my daughter in the truck Hey, the Bennersville gang just pulled in there driving the side of the mountain off. All right, well, they're driving the side of the mountain off. They never bring anybody down low enough. Let's run back in here where we were. So we go back into the buckets. The drive comes through, nothing. All right, well, I, it's time. It's getting on time to go to wrestling practice. So I told Mason, I said, go out. You get the truck. I'm just going to I'm gonna walk out through the field kind of like a flanker to them because they didn't have anybody in the field. I knew my father-in-law was sitting in our field at the at the big tree, you know, to watch the field. So I'm almost the whole I'm almost to the to my father-in-law and daughter sitting in the truck, and this buck breaks out across the field. And I seen it, I knew it was a good buck. I seen it, and I first seen it, I thought, man, that's a long ways out across there. Well, don't know if you don't try. I shot the first shot. Until then, my father-in-law is out of the truck, and he's shooting. The deer runs between our house, shed, and barn right up the driveway. My father-in-law claims he's never seen one do that in his entire life. A deer run where that one ran. 
So where I, from my perspective of that deer, when it turns now to head back to the woods out of the field, when I pull the gun up, it is running parallel with the upright crosshair in the scope. Now I practice shooting the entire way across that farm. So I got a really good idea where I need to be on, on that deer with the gun I have in my hand. I can see my father-in-law shells hitting the ground in the field. And when I squeezed the second one off, it fell, it, it stumbled. It didn't fall, but it stumbled, its tail went down, ran, and then ran on out of the woods, ran on out back into the woods. So uh, I'm right there with my father and all my daughters there, she's yeah. watching it. And uh, I made the comment, its tail went down. One of us, touched, one of us hit that deer. He said, nah, we didn't hit that deer. We didn't hit that deer. I said, I'm telling you, one of us hit that deer. Well, where it went out of the field, we have a driveway in and out of the out of the field back to the road. Well, I'll ride out there. We'll ride out. So then Mason is rolling up in the truck. Mm -hmm. So what's going on? Who was doing all the shooting, you know? Big buck, big buck. So they drive out to the, where we've seen across the road. And Mason and I are, you know, we're, we're, we're BSing a little bit, watching the drive. And uh, my daughter calls me. Dad, you have a spot of blood the size of a pinky nail. <laughs> well, that's a start. <laughs> like we know we hit it just there's be, hope. Got that, start somewhere. There's that's there's hope, you know. And my father in law, he's already convinced, he's already wrote it off. He's like I, That's we, why you gotta check. We didn't hit that deer, you know, but he so he knows he's like, It ain't mine. I'm sure of that because I know I didn't hit that deer. All right. So by this point, my wife is coming out with my other daughter because the drivers walked right by him. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh you know, I told her, hey, pretty sure we hit your deer that you're hunting. It ran out in the field. So we go to the driveway where they have the spot of blood. And father and all, he goes and step, there's a bank up into the woods. We walked up on the bank and you can see the leaves are kicked up. And we start walking. I mean, we go 15 yards and we're not finding any blood. Of course, I have three kids. My son, he's on a mission. He thinks he's going to. Find them, like stop! I'm yelling at him. Well, he's gonna, gonna run it dead. He's gonna, yeah, yeah. He's gonna yeah, dangle. Yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, we we need to we need to rethink this. Back out, back out, back out. We don't even know. We got no blood. We haven't found no blood. Strategize. So we go back to the road. We're standing on top of the knob, the the, the bank at the edge of the road. My wife is there now, and in, in the truck, and I, my two daughters. And I'm like, all right, somebody needs to go around here and get down on the mud, the mud hole road, because. Mm -hmm. We don't have good enough blood on this trail. So she's all right, I'll take I'll take the girls. I said, You take the girls, I'll get Mason. I'm like, so Mason, I said, you need to go up top. I said, because every time there's a buck on this hill, it likes to run to the top of this hill to circle things. That's how they get away from you up here. All right. So I'm gonna take my daughter, <laughs> walk, walk down through this. We'll walk, we'll try and follow these this leaf trail. All right, so we're standing there on the bank, and my wife doesn't even put the truck and drive and move 10 feet, and I see this deer trying to get up. And I just, at this point, I'm not even really sure where I'm hitting or what I'm shooting at. I'm just bullets flying through the woods back, and no one knows what I'm shooting at this point. Sure. Where, where did you hit it? I mean, if it's, so, you're saying trying to get back up, so, so I'm the, assuming you got to The get hole that was in it was in the guts. It passed through the soft tissue between its legs in the hind quarter, but went into the guts. Yeah. It went through just enough soft tissue that the ballistic tip come went open mm -hmm. in the hind quarter. But when it went in the back of the gut cavity, it was already open. Mm -hmm. Just totally ravaged the guts. So there was literally a hole through the soft tissue of the inner hind quarter that you could stick like your number two pencil. I was shooting a yeah. 243. Right. You could stick a number two pencil through there. The bullet never opened, but when it was coming out of there, I'm assuming the hide opened it and ravaged up through the gut. So it's it's only 30 yards off the road the last time we from where we've seen it. Yeah. We were within 15 yards of them. My boy was in there wandering around blind and it never moved. And now it's trying to get up. And then, you know, I end up blowing the back straps completely out of it because I'm not letting it get away at this point. <laughs> Ruin the whole yeah. You know, what's left of this? So, you know, so, let's take care of that but, too. You know. I, at that point, I knew buck, right? I knew it was a good buck. Yeah. Like, 
I didn't care where I was hitting it at that point. Like we're, I'm just yep. shooting, like shooting the shoot. You know, she puts the truck. What are you doing? We're not even ready. I'm like, you don't need to go around there. Just bring the truck. Stop the truck. We're gonna get here. You know. No doubt. But, uh, but yeah, it was. Uh, it was definitely a good shot across that field, and you know, we spent some time shooting across that field and joking all the time that. Yeah, you need to be ready to shoot. One of these up. days. One of these days, this is going to come in handy. And, you know, you don't even think, you know, when you sit there at the bench, you can think of all the calculations and, you know, you've done it. You sit there and you you range it out. That day, like, I just was like, well, that looks close. And yeah, pull yeah, the trigger. You really don't know until. You don't you know. know. And, and honestly, if that deer wouldn't have been running parallel with the upright crosshair net scope, I probably don't hit that deer. Right. You know, if it's if it's running at an angle off either way. And you should have brought it so that we could well and uh, highlight it. What? Uh, how yeah. big was it? So it depends on who you measure it. You know, the, guys, the unofficial, the unofficial, the measure. unofficial measure, me, measure outdoors <laughs> is uh, we're going to call it one eighteen. Oh, it's been called one eleven. Nice so it's it's somewhere in there. One fifteen, we'll call it. You know, and uh, best thing I've ever shot. Yeah, you know. we, we shot some nice bucks this year, and I remember looking at them, but when we were doing the. Because we measured them after we did the euro mounts, but I remember looking at them, and I told you they're probably around 120. Is that what I said? Yeah. You know they're they around. I said, man, these are close to 120. And um, you know we measured them, and I think they, were, you know, 116, 118 ish. You know, unofficial, official measure. You're right. You know? But um, anyway, you know, it's always fun when you when you get the a positive harvest, and you got the story to tell. Oh my! That yeah. goes with it. Yeah. Yeah. It was. You know, so as we're doing this, like, it's time to be at wrestling practice. So my father-in-law shows up, and he's like, did you guys get the deer? Yeah, but someone's got to drive Mason to wrestling practice. And Mason goes to wrestling practice, and the best part is he ends up having to run extra and do extra work at practice because he's 10 minutes late in wrestling <laughs> practice. But he didn't care either because he was he was excited because Dad shot this deer, you know. Well, that's the thing. Like, when you're in high school and we were playing sports and stuff, I know I missed a lot of hunting with you guys when I was playing football in the fall and uh, you know certainly you got wrestling in the winter and I'm sure you you missed a lot of hunting with us when you were in high school too so you know, it's trying to balance that because that those are important memories to be made as yeah well. yeah and that's a that's a discussion we have all the time like you're gonna have the rest of your life to hunt deer like right some of the stuff you're doing now there's an expiration date on that stuff you're not gonna you're not gonna do you're not gonna do the stuff you're doing now 15 years from now like yeah. there's there's an expiration date on some of that so you know we we have them conversations quite often anymore All but, right, it, so. but when you're in high school it still sucks oh yeah yeah and, and it does and i and i i you know mm -hmm. i uh i can see i see his side of it i know his side of it i mean we were all there so you 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 kind of feel you feel mm -hmm. both ways i mean i remember like you know you got football practice and then you come home and you're hearing these stories about these, you know, hey, we both, you know, we're seeing all these deer move through and we're having success. And, and you guys would leave for a couple of days because, you know, you would hunt in, you know, some northern counties in Pennsylvania and come back and I hear the tales or, you know, there'd be blood on the tailgate, you know, those type of things. So you feel like you're missing out, but you got to, I know for myself, I was always told you got to choose. Yeah. You know, you, you got to make the choice on, you know, what you do. And um, we were always given a choice on that. But, uh, yeah, you're only, you're only that age once. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Just a uh, perspective, uh, talking to people through work and, you know, different areas, just where we are and how much of a foundation hunting is for the area. Like we have opener Monday. You don't have to go to school. A lot of districts around here have off, so. There's a, a girl I work with from Jersey. She came in. She just thought that was the oddest thing. That, <laughs> but, you know, right. Why is this a national holiday around here? It should be so celebrated. That's just kind of kind of a uh, well, a, and, a and you know, full circle for me having young kids now, and you know, Sunday hunting's a big debate. You know, some people are all for it. Some people are 100 percent against it. With kids and activities, I'm all for it because that's sometimes the only time my kids have to hunt. You know, right. there again with schools being closed, though, most of our schools are pretty understanding about hey it's hunting season buck fever, buck fever kind of it's, thing it's hard, but the like other coaches are but the other some, well <laughs> no, but not only the coaches they want you to choose you know too. to play sports um you know like with mason he had to have 11 practices 
to wrestle in the first event of the year. So if he misses any practices, he can't even compete at the first event of the year now because PIAA says you have to have 11 official practices. Mm -hmm. And then here's the first date you're allowed to start practice. Yeah, That's 12 days, including Thanksgiving is one of them days, 12 days from the time it starts to your first competition. So if you miss any of them, you're out, you know? Mm -hmm. So Sunday, you know, Sunday and Thanksgiving, you know, there's some of the days you got that you don't have to worry about it, you know? And, you know, they were accommodating to the schedule somewhat, you know, they didn't try and have practice at, Hey, we're not going at seven o'clock in the morning. They did them in the middle of the day, you know, yeah. when most people aren't hunting, but, but nonetheless, even, you know, with my daughters, they're into stuff and Sunday's the day you can get out in the woods Sunday and like, there's nothing else going on. You know, it's, well, on it's, on that note, right? I wanted to, I want to, I want to shift this because I got some questions from the outside here, right? Based on our conversations that we got, I'm going to give you some rapid fire, and I want you to tell me. From he likes his rapid fire. Rapid fire. <laughs> elevate more. Elevate. Listener feedback. All right, I got, uh, I got a couple of questions here, and I want to get your your response to these. All right, so go on to your drives. Uh, what advice do you have for somebody that's wanting to introduce their children to hunting through deer drives? Safety, safety, safety. Yeah, because it can get wild. It can go. Crazy. It can go bad fast. Yeah. All right. Running down deer on foot. It, running down deer sounds intense. How do you physically prepare for such an approach? And uh, what are the keys to success? You don't, you don't prepare. It's adrenaline at that point, you, you, you know, extreme training and shoot it a week earlier. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, yes, there, there is no pre preparation for that. You just, uh, it becomes adrenaline. All right. Long, long range deer kills. Uh, how do you handle factors like wind terrain when taking long shots well, and, uh, how, and follow up how does technology influence this aspect of hunting? Well, the first two shots is how you determine where you need to be, and then you start on the third one. I mean, that's when did you elevation? Yeah. When did you? I mean, in all in all honesty, you know, Wayne I've Clark. I've I've worked a lot more on that anymore. Like I've started getting that down to a science. But the, you know, back in the day that we're talking about, it was the first two shots were all right. That's where I need to be. Now I'll start. Now we'll start, kind right. of thing. All right. Um, general hunting question here. As someone with extensive hunting experience, what general tips do you have for both new and seasoned hunters? So we've uh, we've got some people that and we want to encourage, like just because you didn't start when we were younger, like when we did yeah. when we were kids, like give it a try. You know, so a lot of people just don't even try because they didn't have someone to mentor them. But uh, the question is, like, what what tips would you have for both new and seasoned hunters? Patience patience it's it's called hunting not killing <laughs> you know we've been i've been on a lot of unsuccessful hunts but there's no such thing and as don't be and don't be afraid hunt. and don't be afraid to try different types of hunting you know we're sitting here talking about deer hunting but right you know i've done a lot of waterfowl hunting you know and to each their own you know waterfowl hunting is a lot of fun too once you get bit by that you, bug you yeah know, that's you can waterfowl story. hunt you know when you're waterfowl hunting you're you're laying there in a blind or sitting in a blind having a BS session just like we are here. Oh, here they come! You hear them? You know, shut up, shut up! Here they come! You know, you're not isolated out there by yourself in the deer woods. So that's for some people, that's the thing. You know, so yeah, I mean, I know that there's not just one type of hunting out there. It's not a one size fits all kind of sport. Yeah, I know. I was talking about my my one buddy who says like he just he won't hunt because he doesn't want to sit still and didn't have the patience for it like you said and um you know if, if you take him out and he were to have some success you know shooting squirrels or shooting birds or you know anything where you didn't have to sit still and freeze he probably would haunt but yeah well, that's what i said when we did one of these a while back you know but there's better things to do than to take a little one or somebody that ain't never done it yeah we're gonna sit here don't move, be quiet. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes it's finding the right type of hunting to get someone engaged and 
maybe you don't start with deer hunting. Maybe you start with rat hunting, or you Rabbits, start with squirrel hunting, squirrel. or you start with waterfowl, where where it's active and it's quick, it, it's faster pace, and there's stuff going on. And then you're like, well, that was fun. Well, let's try deer hunting. You know, it's there's something but, about having that success, like we talking about when we were kids. Yeah, the older guys positioned us to see deer to get opportunities and um you know once you have a little bit of success you keep coming back right it's rosy you still get that itch like you're saying about the bug that bit you and it kind of ties into um i know for you you know just you know when you have action and you, you know you get deer on the ground you know you're pumped oh so, my yeah i don't know how it is for you oh yeah Oh, yeah. I was like a little kid when I shot that buck this year. Right. My wife's laughing at me. You know, you get her to tell you that story because I'm sure my side of that don't do it justice. <laughs> but, you know, my kids are making fun of me. And, yep. you know, it was, you know, you, you get excited. And I, I was excited. My daughter shot her first buck this year with me in the tree stand first morning. You know, that was that was probably the that was probably better than any of my own experiences. Yeah, you can't beat it. And and Lon, I would say you being around the, the guys at this table, you you've done a lot for all three of us to put us in those positions to get opportunities. You know, as successful as a hunter as you've been, and you've had your share of success. You know, you've done your part to you know put Buck in a spot where he's going to be successful. I know you've you know taken me out, spent time with me, taught us what we yeah. some of the stuff that we know today. You know, Isn't the Love to bite you. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. Just, you've experienced it. You've enjoyed it. Now you're doing that with your kids. And yeah. Oh, and it's, you yeah, know, that's, that, like I say, that's been more fun than any of my own hunts. No, that's uh, part of the, part of the joy. You can't top it. Oh, you can't. And it doesn't you matter know. if it's your kid or yeah. just a little guy. You know, yeah. Like yeah. you were. Yeah. Yeah. It's, or, you know, you know. You can still call us little. <laughs> i haven't i haven't had the opportunity to take anyone else's kid out you know with having three of my own like i'm pretty That's well full-time job i'm full-time yeah. job you know with you know obviously mason he's you know he'll be 16 this year he's he's been hunting on his own for two years though because he don't want to hunt with dad like that that's don't know no dad don't know nothing you know that's dragging <laughs> you down kind of thing you know you're too much scent in the wood whatever you know he's got all his yeah, never yeah. heard that before. Yeah, he's got he he's got always it. Hey, and you know what? That's that's fine. But like my daughter, she's all about it. She's like, Dad, I'm I'm I help you. you know? and, I, and I got two daughters, so one hunts with mom, one hunts with dad. And that wasn't even like a draw straw kind of thing. The older one's like, I'm hunting with dad. Yeah, you know, this isn't even a debate. You told the <laughs> other one like, we're not even debating this. I hunt with dad. That's so cool. You know? it, well, it's cool when you got people that that look to you that way. You know, as well. Well, listen, man, I want to, I want to thank you for, I mean, I, we could sit here and we could talk for hours and we still might, but, uh, I want to so thank you day. for, I told you when we started, we, if this, <laughs> we're going to cover everything. We're going to be here. You know, like my wife said, see you on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I really appreciate you, uh, you know, just taking the time, not just to come hang out, but, uh, to share some of these, your, your perspective on these stories yeah. as well, because uh, you lend your version of some of the tales that, uh, that this guy's heard. Like a lot of us, we walk through a lot of these stories together, and you know there there are a ton of them that we haven't even touched on. But um, you know, I just want to thank you for taking the time to come on. You know, we'll we'll probably post this. I'll let you know when when it gets published. You know, but um, we'll we'll go through. We'll do what editing we have to do to sync all the the video and audio right. up, and then uh, I'll send you a note and say, hey, check it out. But um, you're welcome to come on any time that you want. You know, and what we need to do is we really need to, you know, reconnect and try to, you know, create space to, to do some of this outdoor stuff, you know, right. hang out with your kids and yeah, and sort of, uh, you never can't, you can't ever look back and memories are good because they've created and built us into who we are today. But uh, we always want to be looking forward to the next generation and how can we impact them and, you know, what do these stories do for the hunter today? Right. Or the guy that's never tried to go hunting or fishing or anything like that. So, right. you know, we want to we want to encourage that behavior. So, any final thoughts from you before we uh, we close this down? No, I think it's just good sitting down and hearing stories and kind of recalling, loosely reliving some of them and getting, getting a little bit more uh, trails. Get <laughs> more detailed. Perspective. Just, just talking about some of these stories, my legs hurt. 
yeah. <laughs> I think my ears yeah. bleeding a little bit too. Uh, and uh, yeah, yep, yeah, just talking about some of it. So, uh, all right. Well, listen. Uh, appreciate all you guys that are uh, listening or watching online. Um, we are Tracks and Tackle. You can find us anywhere that you get your podcast. We're on YouTube. Um, find us at Tracks and Tackle or at Mensur Outdoors. And uh, just uh, we always want to remember you guys, nature is your playground. I want you to stay wild. <laughs>